Um, do you remember when you got your first science classroom? I remember my excitement when I got my position as a middle school science teacher and I walked into my new classroom in middle school. I was coming from elementary um, and I started just dreaming of my science classroom setup. I was so excited. So today I will share um, ways you can set up your science classroom regardless of its shape or if you have tables or desks. All right, Aloha teacher friends. My name is Fleur. I am the face behind Aloha Monday Teaching, where I help middle school teachers, uh, middle school science teachers be intentional, prepared, and refreshed for Monday and any day. Um, I give strategies, resources, encouragement, all of that, all of that good stuff. So, um, but I make sure that you do not miss a thing. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe to this video, the channel, Aloha Monday Teaching, so you can um, be notified that there's you know, new videos. And follow me on Facebook and Instagram. You can just find me at Aloha Monday Teaching. While you're at it, be sure you go to www.flourstrongoli.com slash daily. Grab your free guide. This will help you any time of year. It's five daily must-do routines to run your science classroom like a pro, um, no matter what you're doing in the day. So this will help you feel less stressed and just um, prepared. All right. So in my blog post, two simple steps for an effective science classroom setup. I share ways to set up your science classroom and how to organize all of the things that you have in your science classroom. So I've divided um, this video series into two parts. So this is part one of two, and we're just going to go over how to set up your room and some possible seating chart seating arrangements um, for your classroom. I've linked the blog post down below in the description if you want to read the whole thing while you wait for the other video. Okay, let's get started. So I moved from teaching all subjects in fifth grade to just teaching science in sixth grade. Um, thankfully, I came from a small classroom with desks, so I had a pretty good idea of how to set up a science classroom. And I knew that the kids needed to be able to work independently, but they also needed to work with groups. Um, so I thought about all of those things. I knew they had like hands-on activities, labs, projects, like all of, all of those things. And I knew I needed a way to manage this. So um, when I moved to middle school, this is my first classroom. It was an oddly shaped room. It was like a Pentagon, but it wasn't a nice looking Pentagon. It was a really weird shaped Pentagon. I had these big tables and some little tables that could seat about 32 students. And I had some storage cabinets. I'd like to, you can see the couple lab tables there. I had one sink. Um, so it wasn't an actual science lab, but I knew it needed to be effective. So you might teach from this kind of classroom too. So you understand what I went through my first year of teaching middle school. Um, but if you're new to teaching science or you're a veteran teacher, you know how important this layout of your classroom is to your classroom management. Um, so whether you have desks or tables, your science classroom layout must allow you to monitor students while they are working, um, allow them to work independently and with their peers, and they must be safe for both students and staff. So here's what my room, this is my current room. Um, this is what it looks like at the end of summer or at the, yeah, when they clean the room. And this is my current setup. Um, so I'm very fortunate now because I have a lot of lab tables. I have a ton of storage. It's like the actual science lab classroom. So there are some questions that you should ask yourself when you are setting up your science classroom. Um, you must ask yourself what arrangement is best for my teaching and my management style to ensure that all students are engaged in their learning and what arrangement is best so students can work together or alone. So there's different types of layouts. The most common 
um, that I know of are rows if you have desks. So this is my classroom. Um, this allows students to face the front of the room when you're teaching and giving instructions. They can see it and um, you can manage behaviors very quickly when they're in rows. You can walk around easier to monitor your students because there's space there. So I have them facing rows like facing the front like this. The lab tables are around the perimeter, which you can't see in the picture, but you'll see some more later. So what I've done is I've trained the students how to move their desks into groups. So the four desks that you see, those are going to, they can pull them together to form a group in order to work in groups at their desks. Um, they can also scoop together to work together as a pair. Um, this is just a seating arrangement, seating chart. This is for 32 students. I have 36 students usually in my class. Um, so mine, I have more desks than this, but notice I have numbers on this chart. So each group is color coded. So there are eight different groups here and I've numbered the desks one, two, three, four. And those are, I've learned this from Kagan Cooperative Learning, which I will link the book below, but um, this it's, they've got some excellent strategies. And one of them is to number you're kind of like numbering your students. So student number one, you'll see there's eight of them. I might be able to call on all the student ones to respond to a question or all student threes go get these materials for your group. It just makes that part of classroom management even easier and for um, cooperative learning activities. Uh, so here's another layout is by using with groups you're using groups with either desks or tables. So I put, this is just showing how the students are facing. So um, I like to have groups of four students because it's manageable. Everyone gets a turn to do something. They have a responsibility or a job in their group. But if that's not something you can do, if you have larger groups, if, I would do six to eight, six to eight groups kids in a group that way you can divide them in half and have like groups of three or groups of four when it's time to do group work. That's just my, from personal experience. So in my first classroom of just tables, I arranged them in diagonal rows. That way they were all facing the front, but they were sitting together in groups. And since they were different sizes, I could fit like four to six kids at a table. Um, and then I use groups using a desk in my current classroom. And what I do is I have them, when they bring their desks together, the two that are facing the front, if you look at the, this part right here, I don't know if you, so you have, they're facing the front and you have two on the side instead of they're all facing together. So that's how I like to set it up because the middle school desks are a little trickier with that bar on the side. So now that you've thought about the best arrangement for your science classroom, how will you um, allow students to work together? So let's start with the easy one. When you have lab tables, like I do now, it is so much easier because now you have an area for groups to work. Like at their desks, they can, they can still work in groups, but they can work independently and they can move to the lab tables to work on assignments and projects and labs and things. So what you would have to do though for anything is to teach the procedures so that they know what to do um, and that way it runs smoothly. Now if you don't have any lab tables that's when it's time to get creative. So let's if you have tables or just desks no lab tables um, you need to have them be able to get into groups like I talked about with desks. So if they're already at tables and you're already in groups you are good and what they'll need to do is you'll need to teach them procedures about getting their area ready for that group work or for a lab. So they'll need to clean everything up. They'll need to make sure they know how to get materials and all of that stuff. All right. So you can check out, I have another blog post about setting expectations in your science classroom, which helps with procedures and everything. So just you can check that out and then I'll have a video ready and I'll link that when that is ready. So today we talked a lot about setting up your science classroom using desks or tables. So no matter what your room looks like, it's possible to make an effective learning space for your students to do and learn science. Um, so I hope this gives you ideas and helps you set up your science classroom. Uh, let me know what your science classroom is like and how you set it up and if you gained any new ideas today. So be sure to reply in the comments. And before you go, make sure that you like and subscribe so you don't miss out on anything um, 
video wise and also go to flairstronggoalie.com slash daily to grab that free guide that will help you in your classroom. Five daily must do routines to run your classroom like a pro. Um, also really quick, I if you just go to my website, flairstronggoalie.com, that's where you'll find blog posts, but the strategies, all of those things. I share a lot of information there about teaching science. So that's it for today. I'll talk to you soon. Aloha. Thank you for watching.